Anna. Hi. Hi, Heli. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, Herman, thanks uh, for a great presentation. Um, hope uh, it's a lot of uh, good insights about the program. So uh, before I present <laughs> uh, my screen, uh, let me just talk a little bit about uh, myself. Uh, my name is Anastasia or Anna. Uh, I'm a marketing officer for World Learning, uh, working mostly in digital uh, marketing uh, area of a uh, huge marketing. And uh, so that's why my presentation might be too simple for somebody or too complicated for somebody else, but I'll hope uh, to kind of be universal and just talk about fundamentals, show some case studies, and then we can have our Q&A session. If it sounds good for you. Okay, so let me uh, share my screen. And uh, I'm not, uh, uh, we're usually using Teams. <laughs> so with WebEx. Okay, so I'm sharing my second screen. And then, uh, Heidi, please uh, tell me when it uh, will be seen. Okay. So yes, we can do, this. do you see my nose or you just see the screen? <laughs> I just see the sand dune. Perfect, yes. Okay, so uh, let's start. So Global STEM Network. Uh, we'll uh, we start... don't see the, the presentation, just your screen. Oh, you don't see the presentation. There we go. You see the presentation? Yes, perfect. Okay, so I had to click on uh, the interesting. What? See, technology is always uh, <laughs> uh, difficult. Okay, so we'll be talking about, uh, um, okay, so how do I move it here? Okay, so this is our just brief agenda. So uh, it was like we were redoing this presentation probably three times trying to think what can we show you yet to be um, relevant at the same time, not to go too deep into the woods because marketing can be complex. Yeah, so uh, we'll start with digital marketing fundamentals, then uh, talk a little bit about marketing challenge or tools and then kind of finish with case study of uh, our experiment digital uh, program uh, marketing, and then uh, finalize with uh, questions, uh, Q and little Q&A session. So, um, let's- Sorry, to pop in real quick, I think you accidentally turned your camera off. Oh, hi. Unless you meant to, I'm not sure. I have not, but uh, now I am confused how to turn it on. Um, if you just scroll up to the top bar, it, the little, sure. little bar will pop up and you can click the, the camera. Got it. So when I clicked, probably Perfect. on there you go. Oh, very interesting. Okay, okay. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back on screen. Okay. So I have a lot of slides to show you. <laughs> so hopefully we'll go quick. Uh, so marketing has evolved a lot over the years due to the growth of the internet, as we all know. Yeah, <laughs> right now digital marketing is the most important uh, way to market your business uh, in order to reach uh, the most amount of people. It is a large and confusing world, and uh, I'll try to kind of go through basics. Yeah, and then as you see here, is all of these channels that exist. There is a lot of search engine marketing, email refers, Twitter, social. So like you can get lost in uh, these words. So uh, the first thing that we do in marketing here, yeah? uh, we talk about our audience. So marketing always has been about connecting uh, with your audience in the right place and in the right time. Uh, the more you, you're able to narrow down your target audience, uh, the better results you generate by eliminating irrelevant people. Yes, that will come. We already kind of broadly know that uh, our audience are students and their parents, teachers, donors, some partner organizations. So we kind of get it. So our who is our audience? But still, each of these categories requires uh, a deeper analysis and understanding and dive in what kind of uh, actually like what kind of organizations, what kind of students, who should we target? So let's say uh, many students and families uh, do not understand either the importance of STEM skills to the future prosperity of the uh, STEM careers, yeah? Or um, they need a little bit more training and they don't understand that you don't need necessarily to have a four-year degree to have a great career in STEM, yeah? Uh, this challenge is also is exaggerated amount of non-traditional, like non-underrepresented uh, groups as uh, women of color and just women in general, they don't really go and get the STEM 
uh, try to get the STEM knowledge or low income families, people of color. So we just need to make sure when we target our audience, we're talking to uh, not only our main categories, but also diversifying our portfolio. So as an example, like I'm not going to go through because we're limited in our time through all of these audience categories, but let's talk about students. Yeah. Uh, if we think uh, about who they are, maybe they want a Raspberry Pi for Christmas, which Raspberry Pi is a computer used to like cheap computers that you can buy to program. I just learned it myself. <laughs> and maybe they like video games or they la they're fans of scientific shows like Mythbusters. And probably like, you know, uh, in your countries, you have your own scientific shows or discovery channels. So it can be so many different attributes. Yeah that we can uh, determine then uh, to further target our audiences. So uh, we already know that these people, uh, they don't have formal academic, who are these people, but there's no formal academic terms to recognize them. Or we can uh, just think about attracting kids that express their interest in STEM uh, in technology. Uh, so the more you know about uh, their interest, the better you target. So this is a First rule of marketing, know who are you talking to <laughs> and then just uh, target uh, them with the right message. And uh, so if you're trying to attract STEM candidates, a good first step is to deliver a student persona. Uh, spend uh, some time identifying demographic characteristics, behavioral traits, common interests with these people. And uh, once you have this information, you can determine uh, how to target uh, these people. And uh, let's keep going. Uh, like I said, I have 30 slides to show you. <laughs> so trying to be quick. So how do we do this? Yeah. One of the biggest challenges that uh, we face as a marketers is to reach the target audience. Yeah. Effectively. In fact, uh, the main goal of marketer is to convey the right message to the right people in the right time. Yeah. And uh, uh, to like, you need to know how to do it effectively. So these are real strategies that you can uh, follow to target your audience. So you need to first start with your current customer. Look, the, look at the uh, characteristics of your best existing customers and organize at least in the, uh, one profile with shared characteristics and then just go after them. Uh, think benefits, not features. When you begin to understand the benefits. Oh, is it me? Sorry. We have some uh, technical. Uh, Sorry, I bumped that. That was my bad. What? Okay. Let me. What about now? Are we back? Yes. Am I on camera? And uh, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Go ahead. Perfect. So we finished on benefits. So we're thinking about benefits and not features. When you begin to understand the benefits of your site, you can begin to understand who would value these features. Then uh, collect demographic data to your target audience. Google Analytics is the best tool for every marketer. Uh, usually like it's the first place that we go to uh, when we're looking for marketing insights. And uh, if you have direct competitors, also like it's good to go and check their social media profiles and see what they are doing and then see what, fo what followers they have. So it's also another source of uh, identifying your audience. Send customer service, look for trends, and uh, again, research your competition and research your competition. Lastly, spend time to create a customer journey map, which we will go now. Uh, do you have any questions so far? Like I can probably make a little break and ask if somebody uh, has some questions or quite, okay. let's then wait till the end. Um, okay. So, talking about our customer journey, as you see on this map, uh, on the surface, customer journey may seem simple. You offer the product and people buy it, yeah? But uh, if you look closely, it's easy to see the customer journey is becoming increasingly uh, complex. Uh, and the average consumer now is using 10 different channels to communicate with the business. So, all these touch points create increasingly complex uh, customer journeys, making it more difficult to always ensure a great customer experience. So on this customer journey map, uh, you see a visual, visual representation of the user journeys. 
It helps you to tell the story of your customers' experiences with your brand across the touch points, whether the customers or your future students, yeah, or teachers or organizations, are they interacting uh, with you via social media profile, email, they're chatting with you, or they're sending you a message, yeah? And mapping these journeys is crucial for every business nowadays in identifying where where do you meet the customers and how do you target them and retarget them and remind about yourself. So these stages can be uh, broadly classified in the awareness stage. Yeah, it's the biggest one when you're spreading your words through the social media, email, loyalty programs, your video, uh, YouTube uh, channel, probably. Then you're trying to funnel is narrowing. Yes, so you're trying to target uh, these people with, uh, let's say, you can do social media retargeting and remind you remind them about yourself so then people kind of go and research and choose they want to know more about you before they uh, subscribe to a program or download the file on your look before the conversion actually happens and uh, i am very analytical that's why probably you see all of these different charts and graphs so for me it makes a lot of sense and then in general the marketing the way it works you need to know your data where, where you are standing to know uh, your way forward, yeah, to identify your goals. So, um, where should we start? Everything, like you know, go, comes here. Uh, so today, consumers want highly personalized experience, and this includes your marketing and customer service efforts. So it's called omni-channel marketing. Means, uh, in terms of marketing, customer journey uh, mapping plays a crucial role, role in this process. Yeah. And uh, all the touch points have to be a reminder of your previous. Uh, so it needs to be a consistent experience throughout all the channels that you're trying to market your program. For example, a customer who browses a product, a product on the website can be retargeting with social media ad later on, and then they should see they should have the same consistent experience and the same message. So they remember you and then they come back. And then uh if we're talking about successful um, strategies, yeah, for successful campaign for STEM, yeah, what are the, uh, what, what is the most important thing? So we need to make sure uh, that we, um, students under understand what is STEM and why it is important uh, to individuals and to the economy. They demonstrate uh, what STEM careers look like. We need to demonstrate what STEM careers look like. Uh, also, like uh, shows uh, STEM role mo models, particularly for those uh, for from underrepresented populations. Show women in STEM. Show uh, uh, people of color in STEM. Yeah, and this will be a role models uh, to promote, and also target and just again differentiate your uh, uh, work on your targeting and understanding who is your customer, who is your customers. So. This is like soon we'll move to uh, uh, case studies. It's going to be not, <laughs> not as uh, deep in the woods. So we marketers uh, like to talk about uh, impact. So this is very like buzzword for everybody who works in marketing. Yeah. So this one, like I just did a quick search on the internet. It's very interesting. Like for me, it was very interesting. And this is just a US based data. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure like. Uh, uh, it's different uh, globally, and for some reason, I think uh, there is more impact globally than even within the US. So we can say that, that um, uh, according to PwC, Pride's uh, Waterhouse Cooper, 75% of us growing occupations require STEM skills nowadays. Yeah, so it's one of your value propositions. How do you sell your program? Yeah, 67% uh, of US jobs uh, are supported by STEM with uh, direct STEM jobs accounting for 33% of the whole economy. Then STEM workers command higher wages uh, than non-STEM workers. They're saying it's more like 26 people with STEM degrees earn 26% more in the US, yeah? Uh, STEM workers also uh, less likely to experience jobless than other non-STEM counterparts. And I think it's pretty obvious now with our pandemic that people with digital skills and the ability to uh, do things uh, online uh, have better job security. So it's a lot of benefits and this can be one of the value propositions in your campaigns to talk about this uh, impact stories. 
and show it. So, yeah, so this, this are, was our section about the fundamentals of marketing. And here, like, I guess I can stop and ask questions if uh, anybody does all of this make sense or um, you wanted to hear a little different, like how do we approach marketing, which I'll be talking about. If you can send a message in chat or just speak. Or wait till the end. Nothing. Let's keep going then. So, uh, how to market our globe, uh, global STEM programs? Yeah, like we're going to more technical part, part, and it's going to be very technical as well. So, uh, hopefully. It's uh, you don't get uh, scared with all my infographics. <laughs> okay, so content, content distribution and uh, lead acquisition ch channels. So as you see on this graph, we have uh, three main uh, components of marketing. Yeah, so we have owned media, we have earned media, and we have paid media. So this is definitely just you know what it is. Marketing uh, consists of all of these three channels. So owned media includes. The channels that belong to you, where you can control the content, and this can be your blog, your website, your email newsletter, and social media profiles. Earned media involves other sharing, other, other organizations or other, other people sharing your content. This can take uh, the form of social media shares, guest posts, media coverage, and uh, sometimes products reviews that you cannot over be the reviews are a very important part of. Uh, marketing because nowadays people trust other consumers more than they trust brands sometimes because we're trying to we have an agenda we're trying to market our products but reviews are the pure and uh, you know no non-binary representation of uh, what is your brand actually you know what is your program is it good or not people are talking good about it or not so please uh, make sure that you implement reviews and uh, testimonials in your marketing campaigns also, we're talking about paid media. So if you have a budget, um, the, exposure, the exposure of paid media is phenomenal. You can control uh, your audience. You can bid on the um, specific keywords that you want to uh, people, you know, when they search for the STEM education. And I'll go uh, into this more further, but it's very important to, uh, if you have a budget, you know, use uh, pay-per-click ads, display ads, social media ads, uh, return investment is pretty high here because you're specifically like, you can uh, age, you can specify demographics, you can specify their interests. That's why, like, uh, you know, you're narrowing, uh, you're increasing the chance to get the good ROI from these activities. Okay. So. Be found or lose customers. Why SEO is important? So SEO stands for, for and I'm pretty sure probably like most of you know, it's a search engine optimization. It's a buzzword now, uh, and it's very important for every business out like, you know, uh, in the internet. Uh, so on media is your website, your social and anything that you have control with. Your website is useless if uh, nobody can see it. Yeah, if nobody can find it, uh, the most essential strategy to become more searchable on the internet is investing in your search engine optimization. So SEO, search engine optimization, is a practice of increasing both the quality and the quantity of the website traffic. Yeah, as well as the exposure exposure of your brand through non-paid. Also, it's called organic traffic. So you're not paying for these people that are coming to you, but by improving the quality of your website and adding certain Keywords that people are searching in the world, uh, you're um, increasing the quality of your, uh, increasing the amount of people coming and checking uh, your website and appearance. Like, you know, uh, as you see here, the first page receives 92% of clicks. There is a saying uh, between like a digital marketers that if you want to hide a dead body, hide it on the second page of Google. <laughs> Nobody goes there. <laughs> So if you're not on the first page, it's almost that you don't exist. It's very important, you know, like I will emphasize it over and over again to be on the first page of Google. Uh, the first organic position receives 33% of all uh, searches. And then usually like organic, uh, good organic results will 
um, always be higher than paid results. So, and it's always like probably 10, 15 positions on the first page that you can compete for. But if you're doing a good job with your website, improving the quality of it, you'll have a better chance to um, appear on the first page uh, of any search engine, not necessarily Google. Then uh, moving to our um, paid media, yeah? So if you do have a budget, I, I would recommend uh, to start uh, playing with digital, uh, you know, with Google ads, with uh, Facebook ads, and it's pretty straightforward, yeah, that you just need to create a search ad or a, like, it's not hard to get uh, into this, but uh, uh, the payoff would be high with a paid medium. But there is another option, and I don't know how it works um, in your countries, but in US, um, Google gives $10,000 grant uh, for nonprofits. So uh, if, you're, uh, if you hold current and valid charity status within, like in the United States, yeah, you need to have like 501c status, then uh, we qualify and we use this grant. So it's $10,000 a month for uh, Google Ads that we can yes, use for free. So like, I think like just research how it works in your countries. And uh, like you see that like some schools, child care centers, academic institutions, universities, like it's a many, it's a pretty big uh, chunk of money that Google is donating. So if you're looking for a donations, here you go. There is a big donator that already uh, ready to promote STEM education. You just need to do a little research and I can send this uh, presentation around and I have a couple of links that, uh, you know, with helpful information that you can research more on these grants. We are using it and we're getting to get a, a great uh, return on investment. So uh, we we're talking about keywords. So I did a quick research uh, to see what people are actually Googling when they're looking for STEM education. But as you see here, like, and this is just US data, yeah? This is just within the United States and you can do, it's a lot of free tools out there like mos.com or even Google, um, uh, Google Keyword Planner. So it's free, it's available to everybody and you can look for your keywords. So keyword is actually what people are adding in your search uh, to find specific services or spe specific products. For the STEM, as you see, like 135,000 um, people in US monthly look for um, STEM. It's not necessarily STEM education. They might just uh, look for what is STEM, yeah? And then this keyword will uh, come up. Robotics for kids, 18,000, you know, STEM education, almost 10,000 people are searching for STEM education within US, yeah? And then like, this price is here is if we were doing a paid advertising and not using these keywords organically, yeah? Then we would pay maximum, like almost like $387 per click. So people will click on our advertising and then for every single click we'll pay $3. But let's say if they convert and become our client, it's a great return on investment, depending how much you charge or if you don't charge at all. So like I'm uh, sure all of you have different uh, models uh, of marketing your program, but uh, uh, it's pretty cool uh, tool at least to know what are the most uh, important keywords people are searching to implement them within your blogs, uh, within your um, uh, stories, anywhere on the website that you can add more uh, searchable keywords. And then uh, I cannot, uh, you know, stop talking about Google Analytics. Uh, it's a free tool. If you have a web website, you have a Google Analytics. You just need to, uh, and probably you all do, yeah? <laughs> so, because like, I'm not uh, aware how, what is the scope of uh, organizations that are here, but it's pretty uh, like advanced tool. Uh, is an uh, invaluable resource to any digital marketing strategy. It provides a lot of handy data about websites, such as the number of site visits, traffic sources, location demographics. Uh, with this detailed information from Google Analytics, uh, you can uh, tweak your content strategy and figure out what works and what doesn't. Uh, you can look at the current audiences, who is visiting your website, how long people are staying, what age, what device, what country. So it's all there. You just need to go and look for it. Um, 
maybe sometimes you receive a lot of traffic from mobile, then you need to optimize your website to be mobile friendly because now people are just searching for things on the mobile. Everybody on their phones, as we all know, and I am on the mobile, probably you are on the mobile as well. Um, so this is an example of uh, acquisition channel report. And here you can see all of this uh, from Google Analytics, different channels. So we receive all of this traffic from, let's say, um, uh, differentiates is by paid search, organic, direct, referral. It's all the websites that bring traffic to our website. And then behavior, like how many people actually left uh, our website when they uh, came uh, and why are they leaving here? Yeah? What page did they leave? Like oh, maybe we need to improve the performance of a certain page and then they would, wouldn't be bouncing back so much. And then the conversion is uh, if it's um, correctly set up here, you can track. So let's say people Kate, uh, came from organic search and then uh, five of them downloaded uh, a STEM toolkit. So this is going to be your conversion. And then like your goals can be just to increase these conversion rates uh, months over months, which will eventually like, you know, more leads, uh, more conversions. This is uh, kind of the main, uh, I think it's Google Analytics amazing. I love it. It's a lot of data. You just need to dig in and play with it. Okay. So here we're going to our um, case studies, examples and tools. Oh, sorry. It should be just case studies. So I'm going to show you a um, couple of slides uh, with our Experiment Digital campaign. So Experiment Digital uh, is uh, our uh, one of the programs of our learning. Yeah? And uh, in February, what was it? I think it was in somewhere in fall. Now it's spring in the winter. OK, so <laughs> this winter we, uh, we ran the STEM Discovery Lab. It was a fully funded virtual exchange program that brought together uh, Egyptian youth to explore youth leadership and STEM or STEAM, <laughs> uh, and it's called the STEAM Discovery Lab. So um, these are just examples of our omni-channel integrated marketing uh, campaign. So as you see, like, we have updated the website uh, program page, you know, for the STEM. We created a flyer. We had a lot of uh, social media assets that we kind of were through all of our social media profiles. Uh, video, uh, but this video is probably for the experiment digital regular program. Also, we had, um, we created, the, we're using Unbounce, um, it's a lead generation uh, uh, landing pages tool. So we created the landing page where people who are sending traffic from our social and paid media to these pages that they can just fill in and uh, request more information. So these pages were integrated with our client relationship management uh, CRM system, Salesforce. So all these leads uh, come straight directly to uh, our admissions officers, and then they will follow up with them and then send emails like, again, like this is lead nurturing. So from lead, uh, uh, we are moving to a lead uh, nurturing channel. Uh, these are the examples of our paid uh, display media that we had on our Google Ads. And then uh, also it was, uh, again, people from this ads were clicking and ending up on our landing pages. Uh, where they were submitting their information. So always have this click through a uh, click um, call to action, learn more, uh, apply now, uh, click to get more information. So it's very important to always direct uh, customers uh, for uh, to to have an action on your website or on your landing page. This is an example. So the admissions. Um, we're hosting a lot of webinars. So we were, we created these branded presentations for each program. So this is a presentation for STEM. Actually, I can share the presentation with you. So maybe it's going to be a lot of like, these are mostly the, you know, the program, um, difference program benefits, program overview, like the impact of the program. And this is just for the experiment digital, but maybe you can find some uh, valuable insights that, that you can use in your marketing uh, uh, activities. And then, uh, we also had this interactive blog that also kind of, uh, it was posted on uh, the website also went deep, uh, you know, deeper in explaining uh, what is the program and uh, the impact of, of it. And uh, this is an example of uh, earned media. So earned media, if some other organizations are um, reposting your content, let's put it this way. So like here you can see 
also global and Stevenson Initiative are reposting about our, our programs and bringing us more traffic to our website, yeah, or to our social media profiles. So this is when you're wor working with partners and they are leveraging your content to promote you. So you're not paying anything for it, but it's uh, a great uh, uh, tool to bring more awareness and more traffic. And uh, this one is an example of our social media calendar for the experiment digital. So we have like, let's say some, some of you might have um, social media um, posting tools that you can schedule, scheduling tools that you can schedule your post. But if you don't have this capability, just creating this like, you know, weekly, um, weekly agenda, what, what is your message? Uh, what is the image you want to use in your social? Uh, what the hashtags, uh, you know, eventually hashtag is the same keywords that will also bring uh, using the right hashtags in social media is very important. And don't overuse them, no more than three or four. Yeah, because like some people just start putting like these 10 different hashtags, which actually confuses uh, end user. And uh, yeah, so this is our experiment digital um, campaign that uh, we're trying actually, we applied to, um, uh, what is it, uh, Go Abroad Award, and uh, hopefully we can meet, uh, win uh, the award uh, for the experiment digital for our marketing and advertising activities. Uh, it's going to be announced in June, but we've we'll already been pre-qualified, so it's pretty big success for us. And uh, also, I wanted to show this example. This is not us. Uh, it's an organization called um, Chicken Stan, uh, and uh, I find their campaign pretty cool, yeah? So Chicken Stan is where um, they welcome all girls, non-binary youth, and trans used to drive brains and uh, hearts first into the world of STEM, yeah? Be bold, be messy, be yourself. And there's a link here. So this is a Twitter uh, feed and it was interesting for me to see that they're with their messaging, you know, they're empowering, uh, they're celebrating, they're educating. So you need to always, you know, think how can you deliver your content by um, being impactful yeah so it's and it's pretty bright i think like i loved it just check it out when you have time so it's called there to stem and uh yeah so this is uh our case study and then also like i just wanted like you all know this i wanted to emphasize the resources that we uh have our global uh, stem toolkit that you all know about uh, that you know you you can conduct needs assessment to find partners using this toolkit and uh, recruit mentors. So it's a lot of information on the global STEM toolkit and it's hosted uh, on the dedicated website that you probably like, Haley, correct me if I'm wrong, or everybody have an access to it. Uh, and um, Facebook group that uh, Haley created is great. Uh, I joined it already. So please um, join the Facebook group, share your experience. It's, you know, it's all about uh, telling your story and sharing it. And um, Video library. Also, all these videos can be shared, and uh, you know, it's it, it's already a lot of content to work with. Yeah, so that's it. I quickly ran through my presentation. <laughs> Any questions? What uh, what do you think? And show, and I need to stop sharing my screen. Stop sharing. Was it helpful? Uh, any following up questions? Uh, anything I didn't cover that you want to know? Because, like, again, I'm coming from a very uh, heavy digital analytics perspective. Yeah, so it might be uh, too deep for some people, but it might be too easy for others. Any following? Anna, just a, a, a quick question um, about earned media. Uh, what are some suggestions that you would give for organizations to, you know, explore this option? Uh, you know, because uh, I, I kind of feel that, and thanks for sharing this, because yeah. you know, my own idea was, yeah, we have our our media channels, or we own media, yeah. right? But yeah. uh, how about earned media? What are some, you know, some strategies or some uh, yeah, ideas that you could share? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great uh, question, Herman. So earned media, media is good because it's free, but it's all about partnerships. It's about uh, creating connections with other organizations or another 
uh, stakeholders that might be interesting in promoting your content. And also, like, sometimes it's uh, giving. You need to give first before, before you receive. It's promoting somebody else's content can bring you, like, a thank you. So, so other organizations can start promoting. And then first you can start with uh, your uh, people, that you, organizations that you're already working, maybe even uh, ask them. Maybe let's, it's, it can be, you know, as simple as just saying, hey, I'll promote yours, you promote mine, yeah? Also, and in SEO, there is this concept of uh, that called backlinks. So it's essentially also, in a way, earned media because, um, but it's a little bit, you know, advanced process and the SEO specialists need to do it, but essentially you're talking about your programs on the other websites and then when people click on it, they end up on your website. So eventually somehow in any ways you need to if you have a good website yeah you need to bring people to your website that they can learn more so with earned media it can be also somebody writing a blog about you or a story and then they're mentioning you it, it is also earned media or a press release so it's uh, it goes back to a content if you have a good content that people want to share then uh it's it's a lot of competition. It's a lot of information online now. So you need to differentiate yourself with a good content. If, if I answered your question. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, Palete. Oh, so it, it is recording uh, my... Uh, it's recording whatever I'm saying, like right? It's like a text through. Also, like uh, we were noticing, it's a lot of like a lot of people have these electronic devices, like uh, Siri or uh, Amazon Alexa, and uh, a lot of students are looking. Uh, um, it's a voice, uh, you know, vo voice search, yeah. But they're still like somebody is looking for STEM education. They're going to say, "Hey Alexa, uh, find me a STEM education." So also, like you know, um, improving your website to be voice searchable also is uh, important, but. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of cool things, like, and it's a lot of data, uh, but you just need, like, first, you need to start with your website. Where are you standing, analyzing the performance of the website, improving uh, the content, the working on the SEO? These are all free. And please just research this Google Ad Grant. $10,000 a month is great. Why not to use it? Yeah, if you qualify within your country, and I'm pretty sure, like, if Google does it for US, it will uh, also work with Latin America, with um, you know, Middle East and many other countries and uh, areas in the world. So, hope it was helpful. Uh, again, it was a lot of marketing fundamentals. Uh, 